Okay, gang, uh, this is kind of a long lesson. Sorry, you guys. So I got to go kind of fast just to fit it into my time frame. I have a maximum of 15 minutes, and I hope it's not that long. So when an order uh, arrangement is not important, then I use the combination formula, which is NCR. Uh, and so it's right next to your NPR. So this is when order doesn't matter. The only difference is that you have this additional R factorial right here. Okay, so N factorial over R factorial, and this is N minus R factorial. All right. So, for example, there's 10 people in the Elite Math Club at Del Campo. Mr. Wolf wants to select three for a picture in the yearbook. So, how many different ways can he pick these three? Okay, so, so when you're just grabbing a group of three, the order doesn't matter. So, this would be 10 C3. So, it would be 10 factorial over 3 factorial uh, times 7 factorial. Here's 10 minus uh, 3 factorial right there. Okay, so 10 times 9 times 8. And I stop at the bigger factorial on the bottom right here because they just cancel out. And then you have to write out the other one, 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, and then so 10 times 9 times 8 is um, uh, over, over 3 times 2 times 1. I think that's 720 over 6, which is 120 different ways. Hopefully, I'm going to assume you have this program on your calculator. If you don't, you're just going to have to do this right here, okay? Uh, my old class set of calculators did not have that. All right, I'm going to change directions just a little bit. Um, you'll see why in just a second. So x plus y squared. When you're in Algebra 1 class, you'd multiply that out and you get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Okay, x plus y cubed. That's the same as x plus y squared times another x plus y. So there's that. So I'm going to uh, distribute uh, the x through and distribute the y through. And then uh, I'm going to combine those like terms and I get x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. Okay, x plus y to the fourth. So that means take this answer and multiply it by another x plus y. So here it is right there. I'm going to distribute through. Okay, and I'm going to combine all the like terms, and I get that as the answer right there. Okay, now, I want you to recognize something, you guys. This is x to the fourth. It's that exponent right there, and it ends in y to the fourth, that exponent right here. The next numbers, let's forget about the 4 and the 6 and the 4 right there. I just want you to recognize the next one goes, x goes down an exponent, and then y comes into the picture. The next one is, it, it, notice it went from x to the fourth to x to the third, and this is y to the first right there. Notice 3 plus 1 equals 4, which is this number right here. Notice this one, it went x went down an exponent to 2, and then y went up an exponent. Notice 2 plus 2 equals 4. That's one number right there. Notice as we get to here, x went down an exponent, went from 2 to 1. y went up an exponent. And I want you to notice also that this 1 plus 3 equals 4. All the exponents have a sum of 4, or it is 4. Okay, let's do it one more time right there. I'm going to bear through, and so that's the answer for x plus y to the fifth. Notice again, all the exponents have a sum of 5 in this case. So here's x to the fifth, and here's y to the fifth. 4 plus 1 equals 5. Notice x went down, y came into the picture. Notice x goes down an exponent, y goes up an exponent. So as I'm going to the right, x goes down an exponent, y goes up an exponent. Notice these exponents add to this one in all of them. This is 1 plus 4, 1 plus 4 equals 5. Okay, so they go down an exponent, y goes up. Okay, Pascal's triangle, this is going to take up this whole page right here. So if you're at the bottom of your page and you're in my class, start a new page at the top right there. It's going to take up this whole page. Okay, so here's row 0, here's row 1, here's row 2. Okay, now what I want you to notice, you can see it in row 2. You can start to see it in row 2. This 2 I got from 1 plus 1. Okay, 1 plus 1 is 2. So here's row 3. Okay, it starts in 1, ends in 1, and this 3 came from 1 plus 2. This 3 came from 2 plus 1. Okay, so if I follow that, 1 plus 3, there's going to be a 4 right here. There's going to be a 1 right here. 3 plus 3, there's going to be a 6. 3 plus 1, there's going to be a 4, and then it's going to end in 1. So row 4 is going to be 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Row 5, I'm just going to add the numbers. So 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Notice 4 plus 6 is 10. 6 plus 4 is 10. 4 plus 1 is 5. So row 6 is going to be, uh, it's going to start with 1, and then this one's going to be a 6 because I add these two numbers. This one's going to be a 15 because I add those two numbers. This is going to be a 20. This is going to be a 15, and then a 6, and then a 1. Okay, I can keep doing that. Here's row 7. Okay, I just kept adding the numbers on top. I can do that forever and ever and ever. Okay, I can do row 8. No problem, you guys. I can do row 9 after I got row 8. 
Okay, so what I'm going to let you recognize is uh, from what we did in the last uh, piece right there, in row two, these numbers right here were the coefficients of my answer when I expanded x plus y to the second. Notice it's uh, to the second power, so I went up here to row two right here. One, two, one. I used those. One, two, one. X goes down an exponent from 2 to 1, and then Y came in the picture. Let's look at row 3. 1, 3, 3, 1. Those are the coefficients when I did X plus Y cubed. So I did X plus Y cubed, told me to go to row 3. 1, 3, 3, 1. That's these numbers right here. Here's 1X to the third. X goes down an exponent. Y goes up. X goes down from, from 2 to 1, and then Y went up from 1 to 2. Notice these two exponents always add to this number right here. This 2 plus this imaginary 1 right here adds to that. Okay, 1, 3, 3, 1. Look at X plus Y to the fourth. I'd go to row 4. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Row 4 when I did X plus Y to the fourth. X to the fourth. X goes down an exponent. Y comes in. X goes down an exponent, Y goes up. X goes down an exponent, Y goes up. Notice 1 plus 3 equals 4. 3 plus 1 equals 4. 2 plus 2 equals 4. They all have a sum of 4 as the exponents right there. Here's to the fifth. Same thing. Okay, so there's a pattern that happens with Pascal's triangle and multiplying out binomials. If I'm doing it to the fifth, I go to row 5 and pick up these numbers. Okay, so it won't always be x plus y. It might be like x plus 3 to the fifth. So I'm going to go to row 5. Row 5 gives those numbers in Pascal's triangle. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So here's x to the fifth, x to the fourth, and then 3 comes into the picture. 3 to the first. Notice 4 plus 1 equals uh, 5. Okay, so here's 10, the next number in Pascal's triangle. x goes down. 3 goes up. Okay, notice 3 plus 2 equals 5. Here's the next number. This 10 is this guy. X goes down an exponent. 3 goes up an exponent. 5. X goes down. 3 goes up. Okay, so my next step is just do 3 to the first is 3. 3 squared is 9. 3 to the third is 27. 3 to the fourth is 81. So I have to do those exponents next. So when I do those, you guys, uh, now i got to go ahead and multiply. 5 times 3 is 15. This is 90. This is 270x squared. This is 405x. So when I clean all that up, there's the answer right there. Okay? So it's a lot easier to use Pascal's triangle right there. Try it with this one here. So I'm going to go to row 4, 14641. So there it is. 1a to the fourth. 4a cubed 2b to the first. Notice 3 plus 1 equals 4. As this one goes down an exponent, this one goes up goes down, goes up. 2 plus 2 equals 4. Okay, so my next step, and then it goes down, goes up, and then finally 2b to the fourth. Okay, my next step is now to do 2 to the first. So this is going to be 2b. This is going to be 2b squared. So this is actually 4b squared. 2b to the third is actually 8b to the third, and this is 16b to the fourth. So I'm going to do the exponents next. Now I'm going to go ahead and multiply. 4 times 2 is 8. 6 times 4 is 24, and this would be a squared b squared. This is going to be 32 a b cubed, okay? Pascal's triangle is great, you guys. All right, let's try it with a negative, you guys. Same thing. I'm going to go to row 3. Row 3 gives 1, 3, 3, 1. 5 to the third. 5 goes down an exponent. Then the next one, the negative 2y goes up. Notice 2 plus 1 equals this exponent right here. Okay, 5 goes down an exponent, and I'm using that 3 right there for the next row right here. 5 goes down, negative 2y goes up. Notice 1 plus 2 equals 3. Okay, and then finally you end it with the last one to the third power right there. Okay, so now i got to do negative 2 to the first is negative, so this is negative 2y. Negative 2 squared, this is a positive 4y squared. This is going to be a negative 8y cubed, okay? So, so now I'm going to go ahead and multiply. 3 times 25 is 75 times negative 2 is a negative 150y. Here, 3 times 5 is 15 times 4 is 60. This is going to be a positive 60y squared. Okay, so there's the answer. All right, and then uh, and your book is going to ask you to use the binomial expansion theorem. 
Uh, this lesson is long enough as it is, you guys. So I don't, I don't. You can cover it in Pascal's triangle, you guys. So I, I just cover it with Pascal's triangle. All right. So find the coefficient of two x plus five. Uh, the coefficient of x to the fourth uh, when you expand out two x uh, plus five to the fifth. Okay, so I gotta go to row eight, you guys. Row eight right here gives me these numbers. I just went one more row, so we went to row seven. Okay, so this would be my one times two x to the eighth power. This would be eight and then two x to the seventh power. So this is my x to the seventh power. This is my x to the sixth power. Here's my x to the fifth power. Here's my x to the fourth power. This is the one that I want. So it's gonna be 70 x to the uh, fourth right here, 70, I'm sorry, 70 times 2x to the fourth, and then it's going to be times 5 also to the fourth, because remember the 4 and 4 have to equal 8. Remember these two exponents have to equal that right here. Okay, so now I just got to do 2 to the fourth is 16, 5 to the fourth is 625, and then I got to multiply all those, so my coefficient is this number, 700,000 x to the fourth. Okay? All right, so let's see, what else? So find the number of possible five card hands that contain the cards specified. The cards are taken from a standard 52 card deck. Okay, you gotta know what's in a 52 card deck, okay? Five face cards, okay, so we have jacks, queens, and kings, and there's four of each kind, so there's 12. Okay, order doesn't matter here, you just gotta have five face cards, so this is a C formula, 12C5, okay, 792 ways. All right, four kings and one other card. Okay, so there's four kings, so that would be four, uh, four choose four, four C four, and one other card. Well, there's one other card out of the 48 other cards. So this one would be um, uh, 48 C one. Now in math, you guys, and the word and means multiply. So I'm going to take this four C four and multiply it times the four or 48 C one right there. Okay, and uh, when I get that, I get 48 different hands. All right. Five hearts or five diamonds. Okay, there's 13 cards of each suit. So this is 13 C5. This is also 13 C5. In math, the word or means addition. So I'm going to add 13 C5 plus 13 C5. I get 2,574 ways. And finally, uh, at least one spade. Okay, now the best way to do this one is, is to uh, think of all the hands and take out the cards that, that uh, don't have any spades. Okay, so out of all the hands, uh, total hands, there's 52 cards and you're choosing five. So that's the total number of hands. And then the hands with no spades, since there's 13 spades in the deck, there's 39 cards in the deck that aren't spades. So if I took out all the 13 C5s, I would take out the hands that don't have any spades. So all the hands, take out the ones with no spades, and that would give me uh, the rest of the hands that have at least one spade. So 2,023,203 hands. That's a lot. All right, if you're in my class, I would assign that as your homework.